Ricin is made up of two polypeptide amino acid chains, A and B. Amino acids are the building blocks of polypeptides, and polypeptides are the building blocks of proteins. Ricin can enter the body in many ways. Once it enters the body, the two chain structures work together to break down the cell. The A chain is the toxic chain of amino acids, which inhibits protein synthesis, resulting in cell death. The B chain is part of the toxin that binds to the cell membranes and receptors. When attacking a cell, the B chain binds to the cell membrane, damaging the cell from the outside. While the B chain is doing that, the A chain produces poisonous enzymes. The binding of the B chain to the outside of the cell triggers the cell to absorb the toxin. There are a lot of ways that ricin can enter a cell, and once it is inside, it is almost impossible for the cell to defend itself. The toxin moves within the cell to the Golgi apparatus, the post office of the cell. Contact with the Golgi apparatus allows ricin to latch on to a newly formed protein which is preparing to make its way to the endoplasmic reticulum, the factory of the cell. When ricin enters the endoplasmic reticulum through a chaperone protein, the endoplasmic reticulum tries to process the ricin but cannot, so it transports the ricin through the cytoplasm which is known as the rate limiting step. This begins the decline in protein synthesis. Once transported to the cytoplasm from the endoplasmic reticulum, the poisonous chain can finally make its way to the nucleolus and come in contact with ribosomes. The ricin then stimulates a chemical reaction from ribosomes that stops protein synthesis. The stopping of the proteins overwhelms repair mechanisms and kills the cell from the inside. This is the process that makes ricin so deadly. To recap, ricin is absorbed by the cell and disables ribosomes, killing the cell from within.